and welcome to another episode of A Ghost in the Magazine. I'm Steph. And I'm Elle. I'm Nathan. And I am Matt. Yay! We have so many people here today and I'm really happy. Uh, Unfortunately, this week's movie is called Black Roses and Steph was displeased. But to be fair, (laughs) I had really high hopes in the beginning. I was with it. I was with the theme and then they lost me. I think I said immediately, the intro is god awful, but yay, tight jeans on men and immediately leather pants, rock and roll monster mass. First of all, I'm going to say I'm pro earring. So we're going to get that out of the way right away. Okay. <laughs> also, it is a thrill and an honor to join all of you on your book club. Don't make me cry, Matt. I get really emotional. <laughs> Thanks for having me. Of course. Matt is like a full-time uh, family member now, a ghost mm-hmm. in the magazine. So looking forward to many more episodes with Matt on them. And yay, pro Ooh. earrings. I mean, I have... Pro earrings. I'm also pro ears. monsters made out of records. So eating faces oh, of people who don't man. like earrings. <laughs> okay, I did like that part. It's the 80s and they were just throwing the hard F around just rampantly, weren't they? <laughs> I was surprised we didn't get the hard R in this. Honestly, seeing that it was, it was like a high school yet. setting. Yeah, yeah. It had to oh, be yeah, the 90s yeah. first. <laughs> so I think this movie inter- was an interesting choice because honestly, I feel like its vibe is us honestly because they're talking about fucking emerson through this entire movie and there's a demonic metal band trying to corrupt the town like i mean what is more gitm honestly than that i must have missed that part Which part? I think all of it so far. I'll just wait until we get to the part where you all start talking about uh, Miriam and Tristram Griffin, the two main characters of this. Oh my gosh, I didn't get names. Uh, Me neither. The two (laughs) main characters of the Black Rose. Okay, Uh so the only names I got, oh wait. I don't know if it's the right movie, dude. Roll it, man. Movie? I thought that this was a book club. Uh No. (laughs) 1945 historical novel by Thomas B. Castain. I know. Black Rose. Did you read a whole ass book, dude? <laughs> I, re- I read a, I read a, a book whole with- book and I couldn't put it down. Really? Was there a book with no. that for too? No, he's lying. Yeah, this is bullshit. <laughs> no. no. Luckily enough, uh, upon finishing the book, I went and I watched this movie, you guys. You, I got to stop calling you, is you guys. You all it, are talking about. It. No, not at all. Not at all. <laughs> I was going to go for way longer, but I just... The reason why I was worried was because there was another movie called The Black Rose. Yeah, and I was like, shit, I, I hope that. You didn't that. <laughs> that was my that movie. Too. That movie was based off this book, believe okay. it or not. Is it the one with Orson Welles? Probably. Oh, God. Unbelievable. Okay, but the look on you Elle's got me, face... Dude. The look on Elle's face was so good. Like, I'm trying to read Doctor Sleep right now, and it's taking up my whole life because it's so fucking big, and I was like, please say this man didn't read a whole ass book for this ridiculous 80s hair metal podcast, my dude. You saw that trauma come across, and you just knew this is direct to video, and this is gonna be fucking awesome. Yeah, the trauma hurt be my quiet, eyes. Steph. Oh! This is Troma's bad channels. I am laying that out there. This yes. is definitely Troma's bad channel. Agreed. You guys, I can't. I just really can't do this. Fucking okay, masterpiece. So the gist of this movie yes. is that, you know, it's a wholesome 80s town with terrible side stories and bad parenting. And everyone's mm-hmm. losing their shit because Black Rose is, is coming to town. And obviously, heavy metal Great is novel. synonymous with satan <laughs> satanic stuff. panic Kara. right like west yep. memphis 3 was just prior to this you know yeah i think one of my notes was frank zappa fought for this <laughs> god damn it dude that picture <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah i have a screenshot of the record monster <laughs> frank zappa fought for that drummer's uh facial hair as well i believe <laughs> That drummer oh, was on Marty Friedman's solo album, and then he was in King Cobra. Yeah, yeah all I read that as well. Yeah. If you all have a second, like, you know the, who is it, Ryan Dietz or John Dietz or whatever that was cast as Johnny? Yeah, if I could bend your ears for a second, I have a little story about that. Yeah, tell so, us. Yeah, There's some confidential resources. Have any of you heard of the term uh, creepy recycling? Uh, and not so many words. It's where a man eats his own cum. Oh my god! Oh, okay. All right. We're so going this way. This is where we're going. I, I heard people do it. Where I always go. 
<laughs> uh, in the original script, the character Johnny was supposed to be a creepy recycler. So they went... <laughs> Why did they take that out? That's... I think for all of us, that is a big loss. Myself, especially. That would add so, so much. So they went... What a... There was a big push from the studio to get Steven Weber, who would later go on to Wings fame. Anybody remember the, the 90s sitcom Wings? Vaguely. He played Brian Hackett. He was an up-and-coming actor at the time. He was well-known and renowned in Hollywood for his prowess and skill as a creepy recycler. Unfortunately, he was busy on the set of the movie Hamburger Hill playing Sergeant First Class Dennis Worcester at the time. So I guess what I'm saying is that it's our loss that we didn't get him in this film because we could have seen so much creepy recycling. Dietz wasn't on board with it. Oh, yes. wow. Okay, I'm done. All right. I'm so good. Derailment over. This movie. <laughs> this movie. I don't know. The best part, I stopped paying attention pretty early on. I'm so sorry. I was very sober. Um, and you know that I have ADHD. So like, you gotta just, you gotta keep me. But I was waiting for the concert because you know what it put me to mind? They're saying, oh, this is their first concert or whatever. Reminded mm-hmm. me of Lestat's only concert in death valley and i was like that's a fucking mint move Mm -hmm. but then (laughs) i'm sorry like it's hysterical they lull the parents with this i'm gonna sing you a song about my hometown shit and then as soon as the adults some kenny Loggins shit that as soon as the adults leave the building the lights go out the fucking um sure comes off (laughs) the nipples come out baby like (laughs) The it's fucking a, patch of fur on the crotch. Yeah, I didn't the nipples understand are that. Nippling. I loved the fur crotch. I thought it was a nice <laughs> little statement piece, to be honest. Was that I was called looking- a cod piece or something? <laughs> Dude, the leopard has to die for that man to have a song over his other pants. Well, leopard has to die. Rip. And then all the kids are like losing their mind. It was a, a rock invasion, if you will. I guess like that's all it took. And then all of a sudden all the kids became whores and like murderers. They were fucking on this box of cars and beating nerds up. Fuck yeah. Another alpha beating up the other alphas. (laughs) What's going on? I thought Steph that you were going to say, because I watched the trailer because I hadn't seen this in 20 some odd years. The trailer (laughs) is rocking by the way. It's fucking great. I thought you, when you said what you were waiting for, you were going to be like, you're waiting for this guy at the end. Oh, that guy. Oh, Oh, the end was very (laughs) hilarious. That guy looks terrible, but I loved it. I'm almost speechless. Um, Usually, (laughs) like I really am because there were some really fucking boring parts. Like none of the side stories were good. And then the parenting. I have to bring this up right now. Okay. Because... There's Every dad. dad had a recliner. Well, yeah, that's like in the dad starter pack, wherever they live. Obviously, you get a lazy boy. But my problem here is that there's this whole scene where this dad's just chilling in this fucking living room and his child is playing loudly and literally throwing action figures into the fire. And all of a sudden he's like, hi, boy, what are you doing up? He's what are you been doing up? there yeah. the entire time. He's like, your mom's going to kill me. You better go to bed. How'd you not think- notice a whole kid? He was lulled into complacency by that amazing Lizzie Borden track playing in the background. That's what it's got to be. You know what I mean? And it was wild. What was, the, what was the consequence of that scene? Was that boy related to any of the uh, high school? Yeah, because then his sister comes home with the other girl and his sister just disappears. Oh. And then that girl's like, let's play That's... strip gin, daddy. <laughs> oh, yeah. So yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Also weird pedophilia. Mm -hmm. Like these men were easy. Like they were so easy. (laughs) They're like, you you show me a little thigh and I'm going to break all the laws. I don't care that you're a high schooler. Except for the teacher, he smacked her. So he's like, fuck this. He smacked the shit out of her with a tennis racket. (laughs) But can we talk about the tennis He's a learning man. He smacked her open handed too. <laughs> I am a teacher. <laughs> Don't disrespect me. Did anyone notice when Johnny and Julia? Is that her name? I know Julia? there was a Julia. Right. Yes, yes, I know there was one. No, no names. Generic names. So starts out, you know, they're having the discussion with that teacher, whatever. And then Johnny's an idiot. He looks like 
notcher from Iron Eagle. He looks like he's fucking 30 years old. All the high schoolers do in these movies. <laughs> yeah. He goes out to paint the town red, oh. right? <laughs> Yeehaw! He was quite literally, he started painting on the ground. Like a dweeb. I made one observation. What is with that guy in street lamp poles? Oh, he was humping Jumping it. Jumping on him, <laughs> hanging on him, humping him. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, yeah, I don't know the same thing. He was like molesting the pole. He was talking to her. He obviously so, had dreams of being a stripper. Clearly. And that got me thinking. I hadn't exercised oh, any creativity in a little while. So I wrote a little something today. It's short and it's <laughs> sweet. It's called Love is Easier in the Moonlight. Johnny Johnny, the lover of street lamps. He loves him so much. He gets a rise in his pants. Will his love be returned? Did you see that paint can get burned? Wishing you best of luck, Johnny, with your new romance. Oh my God. Amen. You know, I mean, hey, we run a magazine. We like poems here. Yeah, Thank not you. to mention this movie was pretty much Dead Poet Society and the Decline of Western Civilization Part 2 put together. <laughs> literally, literally. But also it had some elements of like Willy's Wonderland in there. Fair enough. Okay, but the transformations, they were not uniform. Okay, there was no rhyme or reason to these fucking transformations. All right. They were awesome. They yeah. were awesome. I will not argue with that. That was like... <laughs> I didn't even know how to describe it. It was like shrunken head, but their whole bodies. You know what they look like? You know in The Little Mermaid when there's the oh, fucking no. souls down in there? And yes. The last layer? That's what yes. Like. But also Billy from Hocus Pocus. Winifred's ex and when was, they raised from the, the dead. I was kind of picturing like their faces all shrunken like that and all wrinkly looking like the vagina cassette tape chest from video <laughs> It's very much giving. The record player monster, I actually turned away right when that was a thing. So I thought that it was the actual record. And then I saw it trying to suck that guy into the possessed speaker. Mm -hmm. That was... It um, beats the scene where it was... Okay. No, sorry. No creepy recycling jokes. But that guy was from The (laughs) Sopranos. And his delivery is phenomenal after he says that, you know, derogatory remark. (laughs) This shit's happening. He goes, what the hell? And then the thing starts (laughs) pulsating a little bit more. And he's like, what the fuck? You really need yeah. the fuck in there. Otherwise, it's not a serious. Yeah. It's a very, it's the only reason to like Lizzie Borden is that it might turn into like a monster and eat your homophobic dad. If you listen to that record. I mean, that sounds like a plus to me, honestly. And just for the record, the derogatory comment was basically this man insinuating that only pirates and gays have earrings and there's no ship in the driveway (laughs) right and he's just mad because he He can't pull off an earring in either lobe so he gets the shit kicked out of him by this puppet monster though there's clearly someone just off screen making it go moving and shit it's great i loved it so I want to talk about Julia, her transformation, because like this entire movie is rough. They're making jokes about her and the teacher whose name is Matt. No relation. (laughs) So then when she's all possessed, obviously, you know, the rules when you're possessed, you're horny and you're hot. You don't need glasses. But what did she do right before she went to visit the teacher, Matt? I literally couldn't tell you, but you can tell me. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That was obscenely long, but uh, right after that. And she had Joe Rogan nipples for some reason. Can you explain that? And she's got an OJ type slicing method. The least convincing Nick slash ever. Priscilla, the mayor's daughter. Priscilla was a fucking bitch for no reason. But she's Uh, irrelevant. They got her. Maybe Matt wanted her to you know, try a female version of creepy recycling. Oh god. <laughs> I can't even imagine what that is. You know, I haven't even eaten dinner yet. <laughs> well, this should help. The movie should help. And I'm help. sitting here looking at fucking Joe Rogan's nipples. Like this I is hot. To... Are you serious? <laughs> yes, it's all the way fucking so what am I gonna do? With Does you? he got the bubble gut going on in the picture? No, let oh, me it's see. just the nips. It's just the nips. Am I the only it's... one who doesn't yeah. know what Joe Rogan's nipples look like? Okay, go oh. into my notes in yeah. the drive. <laughs> Nathan sent it to me. Hey. I'm scared. <laughs> Why do they look like that? <laughs> <laughs> he was in a hot tub. He was yeah. Totally normal in a hot tub. <laughs> I can't stop looking at them. He's probably recycling, you know, it makes your nipples bigger. <laughs> Yes, if anyone was a recycler, <laughs> it is that man. Can I say two areas which I was confused during yeah. this movie? Number one, they open up with a monster concert, right? Like, yeah, the monsters yeah. just jamming out. And I think they kind of cover their base on that later on when the teacher is 
talking to is it the lead singer damien damien yeah. like, like the omen and he's like yeah this is our first time playing out of studio well there was one other time it didn't quite go with that well and i think they're referring to the beginning of the movie has to be yeah but then the other part that i was really confused at is after julia kills priscilla and she goes to matt's house and she tries to seduce him and she turns into some weird mac and me monster he fucking jams a stake through her heart and kills her i could have swore i saw her coming out of the fucking concert at the end yeah. of the movie. Yeah, he rescues her. Am I? How he killed her. her. He gets the dynamite or whatever, throws at the thing, and then it sets him on fire, and he, he has her. But didn't oh, he yeah. kill her in his apartment? Yeah. Maybe you okay. can't kill the monster. <laughs> the demons. Uh, there's plot holes here. There's holes in Damien's lore. And Another uh, thing that I noticed is the demons drink milk, which is really weird. <laughs> um, I didn't notice that. Their temperature is like 190. They got to cool themselves off somehow. Also, what I'm pretty sure. A nice glass of milk. <laughs> <laughs> that lactose intolerance comes from hell. So. <laughs> They're just shitting in the back all over each the other. <laughs> like, ew. <laughs> also, what they were going to play four concerts, right? And they play two, and then the other two are just like druid throat humming, fucking worship me sorts of shits, right? It's bizarre. Yeah. You know, it also kind of feels like a little children of the corn because they're only going after the youth. Like, I don't think any mm-hmm. adults got sucked in no. to it. Yeah, we're trying trying to get Matt to come to the show. Yeah. It, yeah so show off his talents. Or something. They didn't want him to like snitch. I don't know. <laughs> you know what they say. Snitches get recycled. <laughs> I literally, my brain is melting out of my ears. I, <laughs> one thing I got to criticize is when I saw the trailer for it, I thought they were aliens. And then they were fucking demons. I was like, what the fuck is this, dude? It would have been better as aliens, honestly. Because <laughs> yeah. that little record monster was very much giving bad channels. Killing your mom for not letting you see a shirtless mullet sing falsetto is a weird Pokemon evolution of my mom's a bitch for not taking me to Hot Topic Energy. Whoa. <laughs> You're not wrong. <laughs> Very good observation. Not wrong at all. That guy sucked. I got a Psycho Gorman vibe from some of these fucking abominations I saw. Honestly, I literally, I don't have anything else to say about this movie except that him beating the shit out of Julia with that tennis racket when she turned into, honestly, it looked like a big wrinkly dick monster and just him going to town with the tennis racket. I played tennis in high school and I fucked up my knees. So it was like, I don't know, poetic justice. What do you think? That was a prince? Oh, I don't know. Re- Reese Strong at 63 pounds. <laughs> I don't know, but it was very effective. So uh, you could probably win all your matches. Yeah, so that final scene is fucking nuts, though, right? He, you can tell he had a great time punching these fucking monsters, man. Sure. But I think it's weird. it was really creepy how, you know, they're all doing their little thing. Damien's like, worship me. And this motherfucker's like, excuse, excuse me, like, excuse me, while he's pouring gasoline on the stage. And no one says anything until Damien's like get that man yeah. they were all in a trance i think and that fire was like 20 feet in front of them when they were filming doing yeah. their fucking they weird ass chris hemsworth rock. from mm-hmm. bad times at the el royale dance <laughs> It was very metal. It was. It was awesome. Do you see when he dove off that stage? It looked like he flew like 100 feet. Wicked. Probably should have smoked before I watched this movie. And I had a feeling. I will remember that next time (laughs) to follow that urge. So uh, everybody's rescued. They snap out of their trances. And they have a little flash forward to uh, the band survived. Did the dad die? Because the mullet man at the end was like, where's my dad? Where's my dad? He actually died? Yeah, he killed him. You shot him in the head, you fucking idiot. Like more than once. Like, more than once, also. Like, he went ham. Okay, no. They weren't monsters. I was like, if the punishment was final for the parents, why not for Julia? But they guess were just Julia regular. Yeah. Yeah. They were just regular dudes getting murdered by their children. Sorry. I think it's all just nonsensical. Moral of the story there. 100%. Final thoughts, anyone? 10 out of 10 perfect horror masterpiece. <laughs> oh, God, get out. Sorry, I Second, it up. I'll tell your audience. They're going to just understand who I am right now. You have to watch this movie. It's fucking... <laughs> terrible and great at the same time it is it is and we love yeah. terrible shit i'm not opposed at all how lamageddon i would watch it again Fuck yeah very we'll very bad evil we'll wong call. i would <laughs> i had a good time watching evil wong but i won't watch that shit again <laughs> good times all around so next week's movie is the shining and uh, also we do a little actual book club and we are reading the shining as well oh so, i can't read no <laughs> the bat will be here next week <laughs>
I won't Thanks either. for having me. Me neither. <laughs> well, yeah, you live here now. So you can follow our podcast. We have a website now, ghostinthemagazine.site. You can follow us on Twitter at GITM Podcast. And you can follow me on Twitter at Witch You can follow me at Nocturnical. You can follow me at Bad Bin... Bad Bin 69. God damn it. Too much pressure on me. And you can follow me if you call me on the phone and say you want to meet me in the woods to compare dick sizes. <laughs> and I show up and I'm like, what the fuck? Where are you? You got to give the number. But please don't, don't stop, Matt. Like, don't do that. That's rude. That's weird. Okay, bye.